A very good morning to you. Thank you very much for keeping it Y in the morning. This is Y254. We are coming to you live from the broadcasting house here in Nairobi, Kenya. My name is Ram Maguko. We are also live on our website at www.kbc.co.ke forward slash Y254. It is the 30th of August 2021. We have a lot in store for you this particular Monday. Oh, he's not alone. I'm also here. My name is Ankara Kayesu, and we are here to light your week and day. You're welcome to watch you in the morning, and we are rolling out starting in style. Yes, and we have a lot of stuff for you, including a conversation on youth and politics. On my end of uh, the conversation today, we shall talk about politics and youth in leadership. Uh, businessman Jimmy Wanjigi has urged Honorable Raila Odinga to step aside from politics. What does this mean for the youth? He urges the youth to pick up the mantle, to take up leadership, and to pick up roles in the society. What do you think? Are youth ready to take up these roles as leaders in the, in the country? as honorable members in different positions, senators, governors, MCAs. What is the role of youth in changing the society? This is the conversation that we shall be having this particular Monday morning, including a conversation on the, uh, a review, actually on the uh, uh, People Daily. We shall have a newspaper review with me. I have a copy of the People Daily, and it is headlined there, the BBI orphans. Oh, uh, later... After this, after the conversation, the political conversation, it will have like an extension of this to see if youths are really ready for leadership. Because you know, leadership is working for others. You don't only work for yourself. So you need to start now and know if there's anything you are doing to help the community service. Is there anything in particular you do to help the community? How are you making your hood better? Is your village better because you are? I know you went to school, Kidogo, compared to maybe somebody who didn't, or maybe somebody who is nowhere. So the fact that you are watching us, you're watching White Five Four, means you can understand this language. Eh? Some people don't. But now you who is privileged, are you helping in any way? What exactly are you doing? Are you doing? I know this conversation is already on our social media platform. So what you do, slide there. Do, uh, do leave a comment on our Twitter or Facebook page, which is at White Five Four. Then we will read it at the end of this all. But now, Ram, I think we start with this paper. Yeah, let's, we, uh, let's start with the BB. We then need to be review as yes. starting now and get engaged with us at Ram Ugo and, and at, at Sankara Kayes. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Mm. At White Five Four, also, always the hashtag is why in the morning. Engage with us. Let's start with the uh, BBI offense that is in the headlines this particular Monday morning. Uh, on the uh, front center, actually on the front page, at the center we have which way? It is headlined there, which way? That's the question. Now, it's in regards to the second term governors who embraced the law, uh, the law change by uh, with the hope of landing jobs in the proposed expanded cabinet, go back to drawing boards for plan Bs. And the picture there, we have governors of Machakos, Dr. Alfred Mutua, the Governor of Mombasa, Ali Hassan Joho, Kakamega Governor Wycliffe Oparanya, Kilifi Governor Amazon Kingi, Wasingishu Governor Jackson Mandago, we have also Busia Governor Sospita Ojamong, and many other governors that uh, we are talking about here who are included in this conversation. That story continues on page 8 of the People Daily, DBI Orphans. Remember, this comes after a ruling that was made by the high, uh, uh, by this uh, high court. Now, second time governors who had pegged their hopes of remaining politically afloat after the 2022 uh, general elections on the implementation of the BBI have now been forced back to the drawing board following the recent judgment through the passage on an implementation of the constitutional amendment 2020 bill. The governors whose term comes to an end next year had hoped to benefit from an expanded executive. Now the bill, that is the BBI, which was buried by the Court of Appeal a week ago, had proposed the appointment of ministers, ministers from both as inside and outside parliament, which is a move that had enticed the 21 retiring governors to support the then anticipated constitutional referendum. Now, Machako's governor, Dr. Alfred Mutua, 
who is serving his last term, said some of his colleagues must make decisions based on the current reality. And I quote, it is the new reality that all of us must re review our previous strategies based on it. The judgment on BBI requires us to go back to the drawing board and make it uh, and make in individualized in de decisions. And of course, that's what Governor Arthur Mutua said, who maintained that his presidential ambitions are still on course. The second time county chiefs who had hoped to remain politically afloat after the 2022, uh, after 2022 have ha had to review their strategies. The question is, what next for these governors? Governors back to drawing board after BBI collapse. You know, there's something about these governors that you need to know, that they are very vibrant politicians on their second term. It means they cannot vie for governorship again. They cannot vie for gubernatorial seats again. But they have big support base. I can uh, equate it to my home governor, Obado, who won two terms. Eh? So he has a very big political base. But uh, it's like the only position he can go to now is presidency. And there are 47 of them. They feel that if they go back to vying as senators, they will uh, like come down. It will. They they view senatorial positions as being inferior to that of governorship. So the only thing they want to do, or they think is uh, above being a governor, is uh, is being president. Mm -hmm. But now there are people who want to be president, who have been vying for presidency, and their chances are slim. So they were hoping that uh, BBI will create more seats, so, well, that, uh, 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 so uh, that they would scramble for those seats. So that is the dilemma now for most of them. For example, Governor um, uh, Machak, uh, no, Kakamega Governor mm. Wikili Paranya had uh, stated that he wanted to vie for presidency, mm. but he stepped down in honor of uh, Honorable Raila Odinga. Mm. Uh, but now the question is, what will he uh, vie for next, considering the BBI ruling by the Court of Appeal? Remember, this ruling came after the High Court had already passed the same ruling. Mm. Now uh, it went to the Court of Appeal. Um, someone like Machako's governor, Alfred Mutua, yeah, said he's he still is. going to vie for presidency. Mm. The question is, what are his chances, considering uh, his opponents? We also have people who are vying for presidency that are considered to be well off in terms of the masses and the numbers. You know, even uh, I've mentioned about my governor. He's also saying that he's going to vie pro for presidency. So it's like most of them. But you know, BBI would solve this. Yeah. Because BBI was creating more executive posts like prime minister, deputy prime minister. So mm -hmm. some of them would be slotted there. Now that there is no BBI, or let's say before it was taken to appeal to Supreme Court and all that, there is a, a real dilemma for them. But I hope it will be solved because we still have about one year to elections. Mm -hmm. Six or seven months from now, things shall have fall, fell in their right positions. Well, so. According to the to the people daily, the move by the appellate judges to uphold, uphold the annulment of uh, this particular bill, that is a BBI mm. by the High Court, mm. uh, definitely dealt with a major uh, de 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 major blow to the governors who had high hopes of serving as deputy prime ministers uh, or cabinet mm. ministers by running for parliament seats. So if you're looking at uh, parliamentary seats, we also have Senate seat. Do we have some who will opt for the senatorial uh, seats? Do that we have is, those uh, that will uh, you know, decide not to vie? You know? the, the senatorial seat now is the easier fallback, mm. the easier. But what most of them view this as, as an inferior post, you know, yeah. there is no much uh, resource allocation to that seat. They don't control resources. What they do is like they are like minyapara, uh, uh, supervisors of the governors, eh? mm -hmm. supervisors of the governors, while uh, in real sense you supervise what you yourself don't have. You know, it's only uh, practical when you are supervising me, mm. then maybe you get salary more than me or you control resources more than me. But now you are, you are supervising one who controls resources more than you and who looks like he's superior than you. So uh, that's why they are avoiding, some of them are avoiding senatorial Post. And, and, and some will opt for positions like they want to, they, they'll opt for CSS uh, or other 
you know yeah that is their office. that is their most of them that is now what they are uh, going to mm -hmm. but you know you should be politically correct now for you to be a cs in the next government if maybe rail Odinga will take it he, he will he will uh, and pick the css who are loyal to him now will help him campaign now if it's uh, deputy president you have to be loyal to him now for you to be and you know it you can't predict it how sure are you that you are going to be picked as a cs and what are you going to vie for now that is the elephant in the room and and at the same time some may hope to just retire because now if they are no seats but some they are young people retire. mandago is very young uh, mutua is young we turned 51 just the other day. Mm -hmm. 51 is a very young age in politics. So, in fact, you hear them calling themselves youth. We will get to this Wanjigi story, mm -hmm. who is telling Raila to step down for the youth. Right. So it's like presumably calling himself youth because he's vying, he wants to be a president on ODM ticket. Mm -hmm. So the question is, is Wanjigi a youth? But I think we are going to get to that when we mm -hmm. get to that story. Pictured on your screen there, you can see uh, just a few more governors that are on your screen. There. Uh, actually, the, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, this, th these are senators. Uh -huh. We have second term governors who had been linked to parliamentary receipts, include Elgeo Marakwet, Alex Tolgos, Jackson Mandago of Wasingishu, who may opt for the Senate seat, Paul Chepkwony of uh, Kericho, who reportedly planned to swap with Senator Aaron Cheriot, Busia's source Peter Ojamong, who is said to have confided to his ministers that he would contest uh, for Teso uh, South seat, Okoth of Bad of Migori, and uh, Narok Samuel Tunai. You can see they are pictured on your screen there. Uh, 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 Honorable Alex Togos, Honorable Okoth Obado, Honorable Mwangi Wairia, James uh, Ongwai, Honorable Patrick Haimba, Honorable Paul Chepkwon. These are people who may need to reconsider their positions come 2022. Well, other governors serving their final terms include James Ongwai, who, was, who is also who is pictured there, who had been angling himself for a key political role in the Gusi community, Patrick Haimba of Transoya, Cornel Rasanga of Siaya, uh -huh. Moses Lenol Kulal of Samburu, uh, John Nyangarama of Nyamira, Ali Roba of Mandera, and Embu's uh, uh, Martin Wambora, who are yet to hint on their next political move. No, they no, are. No, no, the, no, the question is actually for, 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 for most of these people, um, they may need to reconsider their roles, the roles that they played during the time of uh, their, uh, 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 during their tenure, mm. when they were still in power. Mm. Um, for example, CIA governor, mm. for, uh, he may need to check, has he brought any changes delivered. in Shire County? Delivered. Has he delivered? Mm. Um, Samburu, uh, Samburu governor, has he delivered? You know, if you look at uh, uh, Kericho, have they delivered? And these are the some of the things that will affect their uh, uh, elections. So who do, you think, who do you think will check that for them? Because they, the they all think that they have delivered. They all know According to, yep, like if somebody maybe built just about five dispensaries, he will peg their campaign on that, that I built five dispensaries. Now it will depend on what exactly they want. The elephant in the room is that uh, there are very many. Mm -hmm. There are very many. You know, there are about 40. I think not many, but most of the governors made it to second term, most of them. So about 40 or 30 something of them, are retiring from being governor, from governorship. Mm. So their problem is now where they are all going to fit. Mm -hmm. Somebody like Rasanga, I, okay, okay, Koto Bado said he wants to be president. He has his own party. In fact, most of them now have their own parties, like the Mandeleo Chap Chap guy. They have their own parties and they want to be president just to position themselves. Uh, their, their maths, according to me, is that they want to make coalition with the winning parties. They want to see who is winning and then they make coalitions with them. Yeah. The challenge uh, is that uh, now how are they going to make, uh, like the deputy president has said that he doesn't want coalitions. Mm -hmm. If you want to join him, Vunja Patiako, then join him. 
Yeah. yeah, that is the challenge on those who want to join on the deputy president side. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. but these people are making their own party so that they make coalition with you, they mm -hmm. support you, you consider them for a position when, when you get to the state house and all that. Mm -hmm. Let's also turn, turn on to page five. These are stories that are still concerning politics on what you have mentioned, the story of the deputy president, William Ruto, on page five of the People Daily. There is an interesting story there. I don't care who guards me says Honorable Ruto. It has started on the front page, mm -hmm. but I think he cares. You can maybe read for us and we see mm -hmm. what it is. Well, the deputy president but, uh, backtracks on demands to have the general service unit contingent attached to his residence reinstated, says that he is uh, comfortable with any security information. He doesn't care who backs him. He doesn't care who guards him as long as he knows that he is uh, you know, supported by the uh, Hustler Nation, he, he is behind the Hustler Nation. Uh, re, uh, uh, century changes do not bother me, says uh, Honor Bruto. That is uh, the story that is uh, on page five of the People Daily coming up on your screen there. Deputy President William Bruto yesterday backtracked on his demands to have the government reinstate the GSU, that is a general service unit contingent attached to him, saying that he was comfortable being guarded by any security information speaking at saint augustine catholic church in bahati nakuru county during a church service yesterday ruto said that he that the uh, debate surrounding the changes of the gsu officers attached to his private residences last week was and i quote none issues was a non issue end of quote now which kenyans should not waste time talking about oh i i think otherwise Mm -hmm. He cares. If he didn't care, honestly, honestly, if he didn't care, you'd have not even informed us that the security has been changed. Uh, we got it from from him and his contingent that, well, see, uh, that the, sec the security has been changed. So if he didn't care, I could mm -hmm. just get silent when they were changed. So I think honestly, I think he cares. You can see picture on your screen there. We have Father Cleopas Osero. Uh, who welcomes the Deputy President William Ruto and uh, Bahati Member of Parliament Kimani Ngunjiri for a Holy Mass at St. Augustine Catholic Church in uh, Nakuru County, that is in Bahati. You can see their picture on the, at, the, at the top right corner of your screen there. However, Senator Susan Kihiga warned that uh, Mutiambai, warned Mutiambai saying he will be held accountable if anything happens to the Deputy President after last week's events where his security was significantly cut. Well, according to the Deputy President, and I quote, let me quote what he said. He said that I want to ask you, Kenyans, the Deputy <sighs> President to, uh, 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 the, de the Deputy President is just one individual. We want to focus on how we can transform the, com the country. Millions of young people are jobless, traders are suffering and cannot access loans. Mm. That's exactly what I meant uh, earlier on. Eh? His, his focus is on, is on the hustler. Not yeah, bottom-up strategy yeah. Mm -hmm. of, of, uh, of what? And by the way, somebody was saying that uh, removing GSU in his security and uh, replacing with the AP is nothing. It's just bottom-up strategy of security. Yeah. Bottom-up strategy of security. Yeah, there was, there was a letter that, that was sent to the uh, uh, IG, which mm. by. By who? Uh, from from Ruto's office. It was addressed to the Inspector General of Police, Hande Hilary Mutambai, uh, uh, Ruto, through his uh, Chief of Staff, that is Ken Osinde. They questioned the changes, suggesting that the AP contingent might have been sent to his home with an ulterior motive but now now can you marry it with the what we just said that he doesn't care who guards him why does he write? Yes, he why doesn't he still write? doesn't is but, but the, why is he writing to complain but the motive we should be concerned about the motive but he doesn't care who guards him it's okay whichever the, whoever guards him is okay mm. that's what he says then He's he okay could, ju it. could have just left uh, the, the transfers to be what they are because mm. even if they bring uh, NYS people to him, to guard him, it's okay with him. <laughs> uh, it's okay with him. But tell so, us what you think about this story. Huh? The Deputy President says that the, the, the debate on replacement of the GSU officers <laughs> at his residence is an issue. What do you think about that? Is it an issue? Is it something that should concern him? Or are his, uh, is his heart in the right place? The hashtag is why in the morning. 
We have talked enough about the deputy president. Why don't we do the story on page four or the other page five about Wanjigi and Mudavadi? And uh, uh -huh. I think uh, we do uh, page four first. Page four. Raila That's Mudavadi uh -huh. back one man, one vote system. And I want to read a little. President's hopeful say formula would enable Mount Kenya people to enjoy share of their national cake. A uh, little about it, so that Orange Democratic Movement uh, leader Raila Odinga and his Amani National Congress NC counterpart Musalia Mudavad yesterday took the battle to the Mount to Muranga and uh, Kiambu counties respectively where they, are se they separately sought support ahead of 2022 general election. While Raila was in Kigumo in Muranga County, Mudavadi pitched tent in Gidunguri in Kiambu County. Both leaders used the church function to emphasize on the one man, one vote, one shilling system as a resource allocation which was uh, proposed by the Building Bridges Initiative document which was the cleared and constitutional by the Court of Appeal recently. So Raila, who attended the Bible Fellowship Church in, in Kangare Township in Kigumo constituency, stepped up the vote hunting mission as he took a uh, dig in Deputy President William Ruto, who he accused of criticizing the government he serves. In a thinly veiled attack, Raila said uh, the Jubilee administration has been pledged by the disunity saying, uh, I want to look for a part that where Mudavadi also, okay, here, the second line. The NC leader um, uh, said the electoral boundary changes would require reflection that the function of electoral, uh, independent electoral and boundary commission uh, in light of this and without the change of the constitution, new boundaries would be created in line of the number of people per constituency. So you see these people are uh, campaigning at uh, the Mount and they are pledging that uh, th what BBI was proposing, you know BBI was adding uh, the Mount and region a lot of constituencies mm -hmm. because they were using uh, the formula of one man, one vote, one shilling. Now we know it's not going to take place because BBI was was down, was uh, thrown out as unconstitutional by the High and, sub and uh, Appeal Court, Court of Appeal. Mm -hmm. Now they are going to campaign, they are saying they will reinstate it. In fact, Mudavadi is pledging that once he gets to the office of the presidency, he will create more constituencies. So I don't know what you think about uh, uh, this story. At the picture, uh, you can see the RMS chairman, that is SK, uh, is there with uh, Raila Odinga and the Kigumo MP Ruth Mwaniki. They are in the church. I think they are singing. They are holding some papers here. I think they are singing or something. You know, but you know, now they are in the central. You know, this conversation is all about, um, well, uh, you, you know what you're saying, Honorable uh, Musala Mudavadi was uh, mentioning that uh, the issue of boundaries is, a, is, is, is not about the BBI. Yes. It is about the IEBC. Yes. And it is about, the, it is a function of the uh, IEBC to look at the demarcations mm. that are there. Mm. Or Raila Odinga, Raila Odinga you know, mentioned that he doesn't vouch for you know, tr people voting or people uh, getting into the tribal lines and big Kenyans separating themselves in terms of tribe. But if that is the case, if the issue of constituencies and the uh, and dividing the country uh, in terms of the the, 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 the uh, you know uh, positions of uh, different areas and the sizes uh, and everything is function of the IBC, then that conversation is definitely going to happen very uh, very very soon. Mm, but um, okay, let's see what happens because they have they have pledged they have pledged that uh, once there, then they will create. So let them yeah. create. Yeah, and that is what I think the mountain wants. That's why they voted for the VBI. You, it was expected that because it is perceived that central was uh, now uh, deputy president stronghold. It was expected that. Uh, they fell BBI that they would reject BBI, but all the county assemblies from the central accepted the BBI, and uh, the experts say they accepted it because they 
they wanted more constituencies created so that the resources be be shared on one man one vote one shilling basis but yeah. uh, that's that uh, mm -hmm. I don't well, know. tell us what you think from home is the issue of uh, uh, the electoral boundaries an issue that requires a referendum or is it a function of the IEPC? Well, according to Honorable uh, uh, Mustalam Davadi, this can happen, this can take place. The IEPC can take charge in, the, in regards to this. They can be at the forefront because that is, is the work is independent electoral and boundaries. They were arguing so also when, uh, when on the initial stages of BBI that it is their work. I'm yeah. talking about IEBC. They were saying it is our work to review yeah. the constituencies, not BBI's work. But it is. It is. It is, yes. it, it, it is the work of the IEBC. Mm. But now this conversation, I think it was it was mixed up. It became a whole cobweb. Mm. We, we know considering that the BBI now came in play, and now they're talking about the the different positions that are going to be added, and then it became a whole cobweb. Now I think Kenyans need to understand the difference between the roles of the uh, IEBC. Kenyans need to know what is the role of the IEBC. Also find out what is the difference between what the BBI is proposing and the role of the IEBC. Yeah. Uh, uh, I also honestly think, that's my opinion, that they should let IBC do it. And IBC should also not be waiting for BBI to start doing it. It's when they start claiming that it is their work. I think by now we should see IEBC doing efforts to help uh, create more constituencies. Yeah. When, are, when next will they review? Because IBC, I think, is also play, sleeping on their job. Yeah. Why are they, what are they waiting? Why don't they start reviewing? Because I think uh, the boundaries should be, constitutionally, should be reviewed after every 10 years. Mm -hmm. But now 10 years are elapsing and we are not seeing anything happening at IBC about the boundary review. Well, like my constituency is very big, very big with around 200,000 voters. And even BBI didn't propose to divide it, uh, to give us a new constituency. Mm -hmm. So I, that's why I, I love science, because IBC would use scientific methods to divide it. Say how many people are here, how many people should be there in one constituency, how do we divide it or how do we merge it? There was even proposals of merging some constituencies because they are small. Well, the question is uh, from home, tell us, do you support the one man, one vote system? One man, one vote. Do you support that? The hashtag as always is why uh, in the morning at Ram Maguko. Not some character, yes, and and give us that. this Wanjiki story now. Yeah, there is a story on Wanjiki, yes. That is the interesting uh, part there on page five of the people data at the bottom. Mm. Wanjiki asks Ryla to quit. Remember, this is in regards to politics. Businessman and Jimmy Wanjiki uh, yesterday urged or the ODM leader Ryla Odinga to quit politics. Speaking at St. Peter's SDK Church in Nyeri, Wanjiki said it was time to, for young people to assume the country's leadership. And I quote, the challenges we are facing as a country need people with a different world view. End of quote. This is what he said, urging young people to step up and challenge the old guard and have, that, that have clung to power for decades. Honorable, uh, uh, and now Wanjiki, who was a uh, who has declared his, his intention to, to challenge Raila for the ODM uh, presidential ticket during the party's nomination, said time for the second liberation heroes to exit the political stage has come and gives space to young and vibrant soldiers for the battle ahead. Now the question is, uh, are youths ready? Well, according to uh, acknowledging Raila's contribution to the country's liberation struggle, Wanjiki said it was time for the veteran po opposition leader to retire from politics alongside fellow presidential candidates, including Deputy President William Bruto, ANC leader Musale Mudavadi, and wipe and wipe leader Kalonzo Musioka. Mm, my question, the question I initially asked, is, is uh, who are the young people now? You know, young people is relative. Eh? Who do? You, what is the parameter of, of uh, measuring who who is young and who is not young? Because I know uh, this uh, noble Kenyan want to be president also. So I don't know who he wants Raila to live for. 
Well, you see, you his, his, argument, uh, his argument, his uh, argument is that uh, Raila has been in government since 1992. Mm. Kalonzo Musyoka has been uh, around since 1985. Musala Mudavadi has been around since 1989. While Ruto has been around since 1992. Mm. These guys, according to uh, Honda Bolanjiki, he said that these guys have been there for over 30 years. It is time they quit the stage. To where? So technically, they have been around like since before some of people watch, some, some, some people even in here at Y254 are born. Mm, um, for over 30 years. Over 30 years. Yeah, they have been just in the scene. And how, uh, how old is our multi-party democracy? I mm -hmm. think it's around, uh, multi-party came around 92. Eh? 92. From 92 to now is around uh, 20, 29. 29 years. Okay. Yeah, so these people have been around since multi-party democracy system. Mm -hmm. But even people like, who wasn't there who now wants to be president? Who wasn't there by then who wants to be president? They were all there. They could be maybe not in active politics or something, but uh, definitely they were there. So if we're speaking of young people, let's speak of maybe those who are in the, those who just entered politics, who are just active now in the politics. People like my former chairman, Babu Oweno, people like, uh, I know Sakaja is also young, but now people like that. But uh, when mm. you are over 50 and you are claiming to be young, I think there's a problem. Or maybe there's, a, there's political age or something mm. you know, you know, So maybe he's talking uh, about political... If, uh, even if you talk about you taking up the mantle, my, 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 my worry has been just one thing. You know, it's easy to talk about something when you are on the outside. Mm. It's easy to critique and uh, uh, actually criticize not, and not critique. Because some, some criticize, some don't critique. Majority. Yeah. Mm. And... It is so easy to, to, to throw stones when you're not in the building, mm. when you've not yet put on that shoe to find out how, how fitting it can be and whether there are stones mm. inside, whether it's pinching. And some of these youth leaders get into politics and uh, they get assimilated, they, got co they get conformed into the patterns that, that they once were standing against. Mm. And it is so interesting to see a, a, a youth leader standing in parliament representing something that they once vowed to stand against. It's called compromise. Compromise. Yes. And, and we, we talk of youth taking up leadership, yet at the end of the day, they end up doing the opposite of what they used to say during mm. their campaigns. Yeah, so I think age should also come with maybe ideology, not just physical age. If you have an ideology that you stand against something, then you should be consistent with it. There are people who are maybe old, but uh, they have a stand, they have principles, they are not compromisable. It's true that there are people who are elected on the platform of age that they are young. We are taking one of us, the youth, taking one of them to the parliament and all that. Then they end up behaving like these old crooks who have a, a, a mindset of, of let us, it's our time to eat mentality and all that. Or uh, just being there uh, available for, for buying and selling. So that is what I think we should, eh? yeah, we yeah. should run from. Well, the question is, uh, should our youths you know, pick up the mantle, stand up against uh, the things that uh, they are seeing, against uh, uh, their political unfairness that some of them claim to uh, see in the uh, current leadership is it the right time is it high time is it the right time for the youths to even take up pick up the mantle as honorable jingi on jiggy is uh, jimmy on jiggy is uh, saying that uh, you know he wants to pick up the mantle i, I say honorable because now he's vying for <laughs> president or oh, once you show the interest you become a honorable uh, brother th th this is kenya oh Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had even somebody vying for MCA in our area calling himself honorable. Yeah, he should. He's, a, he's an honorable member. 
is an honorable member. I if think honorable. They are using, they misusing this title. No. Just the same way uh, people you use doctor. Uh, you know, some people, some musicians from my area call themselves doctor, doctor. To, and today, they, don't, they are not medical doctors and uh, they don't have PhDs. So you wonder where they got the title from. Now, Moshimewa is becoming another... Uh, 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 he, he, he will check up that, that title. If, if today I am with you, and to, you'll just call me Rama, Guko. You'll yes. just call me Rama. Yes. Tomorrow, if I buy for a, a seat, it will change to What if you don't Ram. get it? What if you don't get it? I will still maintain honorable. But you are not. I, I will still maintain. <laughs> <laughs> that brings us to the end of this conversation uh, on uh, the newspaper review. Thank you very much for being part of us. We are taking a short break. We'll be back in a bit. We still have more in store for you. Keep engaging with us on our social media platforms. The hashtag is uh, Y in the morning at Ram Aguko. And at, at Sankara, Sankara Kayesu. Kayesu. You, you, later on, we are talking about what exactly? Oh, I want to get the real question so that I read it. But we are going to talk about what the youths are now doing, uh -huh. what the youth, what exactly they are doing to make sure that uh, they are helping. They are. They have started leadership. You are not given what you don't do. Okay. What you don't do. So uh -huh. lazima uanze uanze kufanya sahi ni ujulikane kuwa unaweza fanya. So right. what exactly are you doing now? To help your hood, to help your community, even in a small way. Mahatma Gandhi says, if you can not do great things, then do small things in a great way. Uh -huh. Yes, if you cannot do great things, do small things in a great way. Okay. So what are you doing in a great way now, however small it is? What wow. is it that you're doing? Interesting. Yes. Engage with us. Let's take that break. We're back in a bit. This is why in the morning.